Okay, we're back, we're live, we're Think Tech, we're right here on a Wednesday afternoon at one o'clock, the one to two block. <coughs> and we're talking about the hearts in Hawaii, Hawaii's hearts, with Sarita Korn. She runs Hawaii's hearts, and she's here to talk to us about, you know, a new kind of nonprofit in Hawaii that sort of overlaps, that overarches the traditional conventional nonprofit and does a lot with kids. Uh, so welcome to the show, Sarita. Thank you so much, Jay. I yeah, appreciate being here. Great to have here. you here. So uh, tell us a little about, first of all, tell us a little about Hawaii's Hearts, and then we'll start talking about its actual activities. Sure. Hawaii's Hearts was founded in September 2010, and it was a vision that I had encompassed and had dreamt actually years ago in my dorm room on University Parkway at Johns Hopkins University. <laughs> I guess you could call it culture shock because okay. at times I just felt so disconnected from our culture and our spirit of aloha. Our, our this is Hawaii's yes. culture. You're, You're a local Hawaii. girl. I'm a local girl. Okay, yes, right. I'm a St. Andrews <laughs> Prairie graduate, class of 99. <laughs> cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really missed a lot of the interaction that I had experienced every day from learning to neighborly relations to families and friends and to sharing in the holidays. This is at John, Johns at Hopkins? At Johns Hopkins. And okay. I just started thinking, I'm learning so much about the French poets and the culture and Baudelaire and my French thesis and everything is becoming so supernatural and idealistic. But what about the simple me that I remember? And I held that deep in my heart for four years. And over time, I started to reminisce and think about all those times when mom, dad, and Sarah would go out to Koke for family vacations, and we'd call into grandpa, <laughs> call into grandpa, <laughs> and we'd think about that and look forward to it every Christmas season. Mm. And I couldn't afford to go back home. So I enjoyed thinking about all the beautiful things we do in Hawaii with our families. Yeah. And that's how I began with the vision of Hawaii's Hearts. Okay, well, I want to explore that. Yeah. First, I want to just make make mention of the fact that <clears throat> we seem to be having a French week. <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> mean like evening, Bastille we, days? We interviewed uh, Jonathan Peugeot, <laughs> yeah. okay, who is a crepes maker in Hawaii, uh -huh. a wonderful guy. And, um, you know, we, we talked a little French. We yeah. interviewed him about his life in Brittany and um, <clears throat> Britannia, if you will, yes. and uh, all, all the great things in France that made him come here and, and taught him how to make crepes. But then you, you, you come in the, in the office here in the studio and you yeah. aren't here for five minutes and you're talking about Baudelaire. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's this. We missed our Beaujolais Nouveau wine tasting oh, because they oh, didn't have it for 2013. So they had to call for 2014 to make sure we'd have it. Gives me a headache. Oh, it's scary. Sorry, the Beaujolais Nouveau is... <laughs> it's really strong. <laughs> I had it's it too. high acid content. <laughs> Sorry. So what did you study at Johns Hopkins? I know it's a med school and who would believe that I'd be talking about my scholarly track at a public health institution. <laughs> but I actually belong to the Cerulean Society for developing student research and scholarly programs through the funding from our university colleges and schools. And I felt that it was a time for me to blossom and develop my inner voice for writing and for learning about literature and cultures and from voices from across all genres of world literatures. And that is why I decided to take literary theory and criticism from the English department very seriously at Johns Hopkins. Mm -hmm. And we do rank from the top five. And that's why I was there. No medicine. No medicine. <laughs> I think I needed medicine. <laughs> they, they have a high suicide rate. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> it's a medical school, but you know why. That's the jokes from a lot of the t higher end universities. You studied La Rouge Foucault also. Yes, we did. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we had a deep end with the French poets from the Romantic era to Romanticism, to working with Poe, to um, Foucault, to learning about all the newer theories that have put us in place with imprisonment, idealism, art and where we are as a society today, how French theory can relate to where we are in society. Standall? Yes, Standall. <laughs> <laughs> Was I standoffish? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I had dual, yeah. I had English and French, so mm -hmm. I had to work between both biases of the departments yeah. and different points of views and how each culture impacted each other in history over time. 
Okay, so we had this really remarkable education. Oh, yeah. Which I really enjoy hearing about. No kidding, you know. Not enough people, you know, come into the room and talk about Baudelaire these days. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, if they're watching this show, they'll write it down, mm. and they'll do that, and they'll probably be ahead for it. Well, I think if you enjoy Baudelaire, there has to be a part of you that's so dark in nature that God allowed for it <laughs> kept you alive over time. Because he really spans all the different aspects of the human nature and what suffering is. Is and how deep and how dark you can feel. Oh, that was the period in French, oh, in French literature, yes, for sure. Yes, romanticism, a so, deep movement. Okay, so all of this, four years yes. of this, yes. and somewhere in you, uh, developed uh, this kind of, you know, I thought you were going to say you're a social worker, but maybe you are a kind of, you know, well, maybe a romantic social worker. I was a teacher, so <clears throat> I spent my time in Dole Middle School okay, and at Saint Andrews okay. and working. So, stuff. so you formed up this kind of worldview. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I don't know if we really let you. Yeah. <laughs> we've interrupted you. I don't know if we let you roll that out. But what what is your worldview and what's important in it? I think that truly captures a meaning of of coexistence. And I think the more I live every day, Jay, the more I realize that you will always be cognizant of the honorable self. Wherever you go and whoever you meet and however you choose to act or whatever you choose to say, it is a sense of knowing that you are of integrity, that you have dignity and that you have high character to act in the right way. I believe that to understand world cultures, you have to understand morals and understand the love and value of each other and to our families and to our communities. And you may not know all the language. You may be suffering to speak a simple few, but you'll always look at the person in the eye with the kind regard that we are both human and we are both in this life together. And from my voyages to working for Les Petits Frères des Pauvres in Paris, France, to Wisson, to Lyon, to Pas de Calais, there were always moments where I was different from the other because I was an American living in France and working. And How long? I, it was the summer. But it then moved to the French Embassy in Washington, D.C., where the Washingtonian community became the most important aspect of delivery and our French fall program. It was le cinéma, and it was the film, and it was Django Renard, and it was Monsieur Soulette, and all the beautiful points that we capture in art history and French culture today. And I will never forget those memories. They were always a part of my life and within my fabric, but morally and from within, it comes first from having dignity and the want to give and be loved and friendship. And that's how we begin with culture. It's through friendship. Were you like this before, or was it was the college and the French travel yes. experience it was formative for you? It was formative. I think coming back home and deciding what was prestige and what was honor and coming to UH Manoa, I'm now pursuing my master's in human resource management. There was a real difference in the way I interacted with students before it was, and I'll admit it, because dad used to say, wow, you turned into an East Coast snob. It's like, no, I didn't. I'm absorbing. <laughs> he said, well, bring it down. I'm like, yeah, yeah, OK. So I learned multiculturalism, the learning of, of where we are. In fact, we invited Helen, Hon Helen, no Helen Nakano from Hanafuda, Hawaii, to share in our holiday get together at T at 1024 on 1024 Nu'uanu Avenue this past Sunday. And it was all about the same mission of bridging generations together and working with different cultures. And interestingly, we had three African-American families come to our tea party at 1024 Nu'uanu Avenue. Of all the times in my life to be learning and bringing together people, it's from a different culture and from a different side of life. And I respect that because it just opens my head and my heart up to what worldly culture is all about. And I've been on this same vein, so I, I actually have to thank you for bringing that out for me and, and sharing that with oh, all of you. Oh, there's more I'll bring out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you you have this kind of multicultural, yes, um, you know, morality, morale, ethics kind of view of trying to be a, a good person. Yes. Okay, is that yes. a decency? It's a yes. decency test. 
and um, you know it, it, it brings something out in you that maybe you had before but now it's more crystallized and you can feel it feel it see it become you know able to articulate it yes right? okay so now you come back well I think aesthetic also plays a role in worldly culture aesthetic yes physical you, aesthetic yes and when you reach an ideal that says that you are comfortable with yourself and your sharing of your family your background and your roots and you acknowledge that we are transparent and it wasn't the perfect life or upbringing or the best way things could have been but you fared well and you've got your battle wounds and scars and you have to learn to forgive every day I think that's that part of morality or character that I was trying to share with you it stems in part with wanting to learn from and about each other is bringing down the ego and caring to want to bring a good mission together and make a change and that's the mission of Hawaii's Hearts. Okay, well, really passionate yeah. and at a level where all the elements in your life up to this point integrate yeah. and uh, come together and then you come back here and you mm -hmm. get off that plane yes. with, uh, with, with a, <laughs> an expectation and a plan yeah. and what is the plan? The plan is to be positive and confident that no matter what God brings your way, the divine has his story to tell with you and with those around you, that you can never fully estimate God and his reasons. Just religious? I am religious. Hawaii's Hearts is, in fact, a bit... Is it associated with one religion or another? No, it's just a spiritual sense of giving, of selflessness, of love, and of unconditional love and care. That. I came back to realize, wow, I am so stunned by God's miracles of everything that I encountered on the East Coast. And I realized that I can never count on my physical container or my human body to fare through life, through the struggles that we meet. It is up to God to release us or free us from captive or captivity. Okay. Well, you're going to have to tell me how that actually works into a plan, though. You're right. You, you trust in God and you have faith that he will bring together the stories of life, love, and learning that were at one point cut ends or loose straws or needles in a haystack that just kind of fell the way they did. But just one point where you will know that you came 360. And I feel that more today than I've ever felt in 10 years because you do and you put your head to the grindstone and you work and you support community in all the partnerships. It's got community. Have. This is we're talking about when you get off the plane you say it didn't I'm going happen to fast. Do okay. <laughs> it all didn't right. happen. Okay, fast. how fast did it happen? And it when, happened when, over it, time. when it finished, what was it? Yeah. Well, it took time to really understand what giving of oneself was. It took again a realizing that you're back home in a positive way, not that mundane feeling where you get out of your bed and mom's got breakfast at the table, like, oh, cracked eyes, <laughs> cracked eggs. But just over time, you learn to interact with so many different people, from the children of the valley, to working with teens who prostituted themselves, to kids who are drug dealing, to homeless people who have made mistakes long ago, to war I'm, veterans. I'm starting to get it now. So when you come off the plane, you say... It's a lot of shock over oh, time. It's a shock, and these are things that are not up to your ideal. Absolutely. And you're, you know, astounded that yeah. it could happen this way, and you're not going to tolerate it, and you're yeah. going to roll up your sleeves, get in, and fix it somehow. Yes. Okay? And and then now the, the how is, is what happens then. Yes. And so somehow it is revealed to you how. How? What is, what is the how? The how becomes an instant response of... I want to serve as an example and bring people together to work for the heart of Hawaii. We are Hawaii's heart. Using the skills that you have. Using teaching as a background, community advocacy, working with the state legislature, with Senator Chun Oakland, being involved She'd be a with good children person in, for in that. day. Yeah. Yes. She's actually a member of Hawaii's Hearts and in fact okay. a general counsel to our board of directors. And she will actually be attending our youth summit on Saturday, this December fourteenth at Manoa Innovation. You thought Center. I forgot about the youth oh, summit. Oh, I Saturday. don't think so. Oh. I just I'm shocked because you were asking me to, to finally tell you how a lot of shock in life can finally get you the right answer or bring you back to life. <laughs> well, if that was God's intentions, it, it worked. <laughs> okay. All right, we're going we're gonna to talk more about this program on yes. Saturday right after the break. Uh, that's Sarita Korn, Hawaii's Hearts, the hearts in Hawaii. I like that. Thank you. Uh, we'll be right back after the break. Yeah. 
want to thank our underwriters. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Maui Electric on Maui and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company. The High Tech Development Corporation, the state's leading technology agency, attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Castle in Cook, Hawaii, with a time-honored legacy that spans more than 160 years and revolves around its mission of investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Hawaii Gas, formerly the gas company, a proponent of the liquefied natural gas initiative, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Collateral Analytics, a Hawaii-based tech company empowering the real estate industry with greater and faster access to the tools and data they need to make better informed property investment decisions. I'm Nicole Horry. Thanks so much for joining us on ThinkTech. I'm Maria Kashem. See you next time. Okay, we're back, we're live. It's the one to two block here on a given Wednesday with Sarita Korn, who as you will see if you haven't been watching, is an amazing person. And she runs Hawaii's Hearts, the Hearts in Hawaii, which has a program on Saturday. So tell us about the program on Saturday, Sarita. Yes, uh, Jay, we'll actually be featuring a special array of keynote speakers to develop key topics of concern to the state of Hawaii and for the youth. Example. We are looking particularly at sustainability and energy conservation, the rail and the project at work, and where we stand with economics and feasibility. We'll also take a look at career development and youth strategies for success, from building self-esteem to making a positive impact and building self-awareness for the world around us. And I like these two, financial literacy to afford your car and your college tuition, and the job hunting process, how to interview and how to do well on upcoming um, social media contacts and partnerships that we make from within so, the circles. So who, who, who is your audience, who is your constituency for this? We're actually looking to project for 60 students from our high schools, our sophomores, juniors, and seniors from private and public schools. And we've asked key experts in their fields to come on board and, and talk in the presentation room and boardroom for the day. We also have an awards luncheon, I wanted to share that, yes. where we're awarding our five select Spirit of the Community awardees for their role in public service and the achievements they've made over time through their careers. These are dignitaries and executive directors of their nonprofit Oh, okay, okay. They're actually uh, the people who run the nonprofits. Yes. And there are a, a, a number of nonprofits involved? We've selected two, and we've selected three dignitaries. But you can't tell from, us yet who gets well, the awards. It's, it'd be nice if you'd join us from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. <laughs> on Saturday for but, the lunch but program. But right now, it's a secret day. It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a secret. You can just tell me personally. <laughs> <laughs> How about I slip it under the book? <laughs> okay, so, I mean, this, is, this sounds like it would be very valuable to a high school kid to come and hear this out yeah. on a role model basis, you know, on a sort of connection with the community basis, and on the how to do it basis, how to, how yeah. to be an adult, True. how to get along. Yeah, I think a lot of us, when we're in our teenage years, we're really looking to just cut the wounds and cut the salt and the scars and just get up and move in the right direction. And I think a lot of us just need something to just sit us down, anchor us, and get our goals and our plans rooted ahead. Yeah, so you're going to try to do that. You we have been do doing that. We have been. Yes. Yeah. So this is not the first and only. This is this is one of a series now. Probably. What other kinds of activities do you use to in order to generate the same kind of uh, you know, outreach, interaction? Yeah. Yeah. I think because of my background as a teacher, I've always been connected to HIS, the private school sector's organization for community news and involvement for professional training and development HIS of our teachers. HIS is Hawaii? Hawaii Association of Independent Schools. Okay. And for the DOE, I, I was particular to work with schools that were in proximity to Manoa Innovation Center, like Roosevelt and McKinley and you know, we, we really care Are about you in our Manoa students. Innovations? 
Yeah, we were looking at hosting our neighborhood board meeting there, actually. Oh. Yeah, a presentation. The, the Manoa neighborhood board. But you have an office there. We don't have an office there, but they have given us the use of the boardroom and the presentation. Well, that's very nice. Yeah. And it's appropriate, I think. It is very appropriate for learning on a higher level what we can do in decision making and for policies we'd like to affect, what kinds of recommendations we can make as youth advocates and as experts in the room to build strategic planning in the boardroom and work with our lawmakers and policy makers through the state who attend the conference. This would be extremely important for them to realize as well. Okay, so you have, you have, meet, have you been doing meetings there? We've not done any meetings there. It was a special opportunity through a former partnership I had forged through my work as a Manoa District Board member and my vote to hosting it there and okay. the, in the presentation room. But Which you might in the future, though. Yeah, I like I mean, the It's a good there. location, it, for it, sure. It is, and their rent's pretty good, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, and so what other activities, aside from you know conferences like, yeah. like the one on Saturday, which is where? This is at Manoa Innovation Center. Okay. Yes. Woodland Drive. Yeah, across of the marketplace. Oh, sure. Yeah, and one down from the public library. We actually, we did a strong, um, strong move there. We, we worked with Senator Chun Oakland for Children and Youth Day, and we really built a strong program for involving student leadership and involvement throughout the entire year with our Forge connection to the students that had contributed to our e-calendar for our Hawaii. Okay. And this is... Uh, let's see. Yeah. We can get a shot of that. There it is. Hold it up. And what is this now? Can you open a page or two and let us look inside? That's a beautiful piece of work. This is a dedication page to Senator Chun Oakland, our event founder of Children and Youth Day, mm -hmm. to different pages with the artwork it's featured. It's a major calendar. It is. We've given this out to various dignitaries who have helped Hawaii's Hearts in this past year. And each child that had submitted their artwork, this is a nice one, Chris from Palisades School. These are kids. These are kids. Great. We had a party for them at Teddy Bear World Hawaii Museum where we were looking to build on learning and the use of animatronics. Bears that could actually animate oh, history. An animatronics. Yeah, across that's, the ages. That's electronic animation. With bears. With bears, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> animatronics. So it's just such a nice way to encourage the learning, the cultural enrichment, and the Hoy's Hearts aspect to the group that day over the it's summer. It's a very nice idea. Yes. And from there, we moved into our 20th anniversary with Children and Youth Day. And we gained a lot of monetary support from City Council member Ann Kobayashi and various members from our support team. And we were named a community sponsor which was of the higher levels of designation to support this beautiful statewide celebration every mm -hmm. year. Tell me about the celebration. What is it? Children and Youth Day is probably the largest celebration in Hawaii. And from the realm of public relations, I can say that it has touched the hearts and minds of many children and their families from all islands. Some that go to their event in Kona or to Maui, or to those families that are here in Oahu, they make a special trip out to the Capitol on that first Sunday of every October. And there are senators and House of Representatives that go to every school in their district and provide flyers for the children. Boy, and you really have achieved something on that. Yes. This is, this is a statewide experience. A statewide experience. We have so many people that we have to thank for this event. 53,000 people come out to the Capitol for children and youth. That's day. amazing. And over 4,000 volunteers get involved. Okay, what do you do during the day? Well, we have different zones, and Hawaii's Hearts participated in the Keiki Zone, where we brought in many community partners that support missions for supporting our children and youth. Uh, we also have a teen zone, a green zone, for learning about recycling and community purification to financial literacy with the banks, so many of our sponsors are there of our platinum levels. And we also have just a strong array of entertainment and games from Brown Bags to Stardom with Johnny Kai, my colleague Johnny there, mm -hmm. to working with some of the best youth talent in fashion, modeling, singing, and 
ukulele performances. And don't even forget to name dance. Sure. <laughs> They're all there. Sure. On stage. So how do you bring experts in who who do the dance, who do the music, who yes. show the kids these, yes. these uh, you know, experiences, these, we these do. activities? We work hard to recruit people, and the youth talent that is there is to inspire and to encourage future generations of talent to Hawaii. So you're looking to show kids something they don't already know. This is to reveal things to yes. them that will help them be better people and Absolutely. have a better world view and, and maybe have a better career ultimately yes. and care more about education, I suppose. And, yes. And as you said originally, care more about being good to people. Yes. And decent yes. in the world. Yeah. Um, wow, this is, a pretty, this is a pretty ambitious program. We are, and I think one area that I was always, you know, not happy to touch upon was when we talk about cultures or being good people, was bias. Because the same time that you work within cultures, you work within the cultural levity and the gravity. And you have to make space and opportunity from between. And there will always be social status and there will always be economic differences, but you will always try to strike that happy medium to bring everyone together to make things work. So we strum, we strum together with Hawaii's Hearts, and it is a harmony that we have looked to affect in our community. And it's a rhythm that we've been living by, and a hope that with spirit, spirit of community, our spirit of aloha, our wish to see Hawaii thrive in its next generation, for the next generation of leaders, that we will continue to inspire by our stories of love, kindness, honesty, openness, and goodwill. How are you funded? We actually have internal donations that are provided through each event that we do, and members just step up to the plate and provide for resources so we can have our arts and crafts table at Children and Youth Day to sometimes we get a very good cut with so businesses. So it's by activity, you're funded by activity? We go from activity. What about the cost of administration? Um, we are all nonprofit, so we don't have to pay administration and I, I cover several hats. So while I also direct membership, I also look to support administration. So everything happens within the several roles that I play. <laughs> You're the CEO, aren't you? I, I want to be like you, actually. <laughs> well, I'm the bottle washer is all I am. Oh my gosh, I was about to say, let's be honest. <laughs> we know what kindness is. <laughs> so, okay, so um, where's your office? Um, I work out of my home mm -hmm. and it's been most effective. Whenever we have meetings, I choose, say, the public library at Manoa Community Room or Starbucks has been very that's good great. to that's us. Great. That's great. <laughs> I like that Starbucks. Yeah, and um, sometimes we do like uh, some talk at the restaurant and s support each other and just share and recap. This but, is really, this, is, this, this yeah. reminds me a lot of Think Tech actually. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling better. <laughs> so, you know, the thing is though that. Um, you know, in order to do this, you got to get into the schools. Yes. You know, and I, I tell you the truth, uh, you know, years ago, not recently, but years ago, we tried, we tried to set up a program where we would have downtown business guys who care a lot about kids and about the schools and about the quality of education yeah. in Hawaii. We tried to, you know, insinuate those guys into the schools. We had a, a whole program worked out for it, and uh, it would be a sort of a, a you know, a, a downtown into the schools, you know, a mentor mm -hmm. type of appearance where somebody would go and it'd be, what's my line? He'd go to the school, yeah. say at 11 o'clock in the morning, he'd have a class, and he'd say, you know, I happen to be, what, a biochemist. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to tell you what I do all day and what I had to study to be a biochemist mm -hmm. and how my work is affecting the community and how hard it is or easy it is and what it's like to be in academia, you know, that kind of thing. And, and we couldn't get into the schools. We couldn't, they, you know, the, everywhere we went, the school system said, uh, you know, we don't, we don't want uh, strangers coming on the True. campus. And, uh, you know, we, we have a tight schedule and teachers have a lot of obligations. And there's no time for people mm. to come from downtown and yeah. address the kids like that. Yeah. So, you know, take a hike. <laughs> and we never got in. And, and we couldn't do the program. Now, somehow you have gotten in. 
you have bonded up. You're able to deal with these kids and yeah. have them come and, <laughs> and, and, and advise them about the programs you're doing and let them know, get their yeah. parents involved. This is the, the magic of what you're doing. I think it's the miracle from God. Maybe so. Yes. <laughs> I had the right people. In fact, the e-newsletter from HIS is a very powerful place for learning about community events and upcoming opportunities for their students. So once I was able to get the in. And when you work with people from the circle, and I have to thank Senator Chen Oakland for my established credibility and the work that I've done in public relations for Children and Youth Day and our planning committee, that we were looking to project the creativity contest. And from there, you know, you meet the director of marketing and community relations and Susan I thank Susan Nakamura for allowing us to include our advertisement there in the Hawaii Association of Independent Schools newsletter. And all of the teachers and faculty and staff, they read about these events. So for the directors of career development, for directors of um, college counseling, they for student you. life, they know about me. So they would email me. And then having some colleagues who are teachers at schools, like Eric, Eric Eats, our district board chair for Manoa, mm -hmm. He makes announcement in school assemblies, and because he's our claim to fame of Manoa, all of the students that's, from Punahou should be there. That's the challenge and that's the success. Yeah, it's yeah. having those people, and maybe it's just being in the same proximity and working from smaller circles and then establishing yourself in these these situations where you're building your network for this this place, this, this proximity. And, and from there, you gain a name from within that community, and over time, you just establish so many people's names and you know and they know who you are that you can do a big event and just start emailing and getting them there you reach critical misses you reach yes. a tipping point a yeah. tipping point where you can actually do the big and at the Hawaii Convention Center that's big yeah where I just got an email asking to look at their place for next year summit okay we'll talk about that right after yeah. this break you know, there's a lot of things you're doing, it's sort of rolling them out one by one. <laughs> <laughs> it's Rita Korn, <clears throat> Hawaii's Hearts, the Hearts in Hawaii, here on Think Tech, Community Matters. We'll be right back after this break. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel for Think Tech. For nearly half a century, the Hawaiian Foreign Trade Zone, number nine, has brought the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone program to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. DBED, the Hawaii Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, operates Hawaii's Foreign Trade Zone program. It does so to encourage international business and economic development. The Foreign Trade Zone mission is to increase the amount of international trading activity in Hawaii, thereby providing employment opportunities for the residents of our island state. For more information, see ftz9.org. I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech. Mahalo. Oh, it's, it's funny. Isn't <laughs> okay, it? we're we're back. We're live, and during the break, we, we have identified uh, Sarita Korn as a a, a, pros, a a combination of being a local girl and an East Coast girl, <laughs> and we're trying to figure out which part of Sarita is local and which part is East Coast. But they're both present, <laughs> and they're both functioning. <laughs> <laughs> Multi dual. Yes. <laughs> oh, offered him. Okay, so you got this thing going on with the convention center. Now yes. that's that's a biggie, isn't it? That would be an important grant to have mm. filed, so we could look at Youth Summit 2014, and just excitement from there. I can't even say. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about the volunteers. I mean, yeah. you, you, in order to put this together, I mean, we have similar, you know, issues. We, we do. Um, in order to put this together, you've <laughs> got to have a whole battalion of people yeah. helping you. And you've got to you've got to find the strength and the um, you know aptitude to supervise them, because it ain't easy. Especially the, lot, the more people you have, the more difficult it is. It, it is. So how do you do that? And and I wanted to say I I actually respect people who have a full time job and further themselves in school to to take a class or two and maintain daily operations of their nonprofit. I think it's a lot going on, plus have a family. I have to say, with my group, Hawaii's Hearts, it was a lot of trust, and it's knowing who has the most expertise and speaking to the higher crust. I was always built and empowered and inspired by honor and prestige, 
And when I've been able to meet people from the events I've attended, I've always chosen to work with them first. I've come forward with an honest question, can you help emcee our program, or can you lead up um, operations, and they've helped me. Many of them are leading their businesses, they're key experts in their field, so I don't have to really oversee them, I don't have to do the micromanagement thing. but. That's where the role of administration is on me to take on all that. Well, how, how, how does it work? I mean, I'm really I'm, I'm interested not only from the point of view of trying to educate our listeners yeah. on how your organization comes together, but also, you know, from my own curiosity. Yeah. Uh, so, so how do you have? How many volunteers do you have for a program such as the one, the summit you contemplated at the convention center? How many do you expect to use? Uh, about 100 volunteers. 100 volunteers, yes. okay. For and this how you Saturday, organize them? Is yes. it, it, go ahead. For this, this Saturday, Saturday it's smaller. It's smaller. But for the convention center, probably about 100. And that would probably be a larger audience at, say, 500 youth, where we can actually take one of their meeting rooms or conference rooms and utilize the resources and the time there to really, really present a fantastic program that would be outstanding. But for the 50 um, volunteers we have, they also have, see the beauty of Hawaii's Hearts is when you have a member, you have a family. And your family has the talent to get you through this or to, to feature and succeed. So my friend, is the MC and her children are the ukulele performers. Sure, it's easier for everybody yes. if they operate together. And it's just a stronger sense of, of unity, um, cohesion, love, and, and harmony. This this okay. icebreaker, it's just all there. Because so it's lesson families. one, keep the family. Yes. Try to get the family to volunteer as a, as a, yes. as a group. Yes, get the family and, and really be good to the staff for the person that you work with. Could be your director, it could be an important volunteer, but know the staff so everything runs smoothly, so they support you mm -hmm. and your program. Are you dealing one one on one with every volunteer separately, or do you have a chain of command of some kind? We do have a different kind of chain of command where I work with a volunteer, and this volunteer works with their colleagues and their family. So okay. in that sense, so there is there is a bit of a yes. tree there yes. somehow. Yes, you got to have that, otherwise you you know yes. you'll, you'll be. Uh, you, and many of them live in opposite at ends of, of the world. I have some friends who are Hawaii's Hearts members in France. I was thinking of also hosting a fashion show at the Maison Française in Washington, D.C. to use the uh, main uh, room as well as the uh, movie house for building the program and then charging for the event and making that an event to bring Spirit of Aloha to Washington. Wow. So there's some and to raise money for And it. raise money too. There's a lot of things that I would like to do and, and really just, just explore that in this year now that things are moving on from this past year's program and our youth summit for Saturdays. So yeah, wow. we have time to get. We're going to do a retreat and get together and just brainstorm all the new things. We'd yeah, like it sounds to do. like you've got a few things to discuss. Oh but, yeah. You know, I just you know it occurs to me that your teaching experience has yes. got to be central in all of this. Oh, it is. Now, tell me about your teaching experience first, and then I'd like to know how you play yes, it out in these yes. programs. I've had five years of good teaching in my life. Where? And I've taught at St. Andrew's Prairie. I've taught One of at my favorite schools. By really? Way. Yeah. Yes, Central Intermediate Dole Middle School. And I spent about a year just substitute teaching before I moved from teaching into human resource management. And there's so many overlaps between HR and education and training and development that it's all about human talent capacity and ability, you know, competence. So in, in terms of why, it's just a sense of voice to advocate and to bring out the talent and opportunity between others, to collaborate, to achieve clarity, and to build a new system or a program or a community package and have it work and pitch it to all the right people and see it take place. Okay, but it strikes me that you got kids there. Yes. And as, as part of this is you're trying to impart values to mm -hmm. them, you're trying to impart lessons of mm -hmm. one kind or another, and your teaching experience, you know, is uh, uh, yeah. you get substantial teaching experience. Yeah. So this is really, 
in some ways this is a school, am I right? It is, and it's funny you mention that because over time when you've worked with different professional organizations, like I was president of my American Business Women's Chapter, Ulupono, here in Hawaii, and we presided in Kaneohe and Kailua, and most of the members were actually teachers, where I took in my year, or my term of presidency, an interest to develop business women's education and from our programs with National learn about our community campaign for the mission of ABWA National. I think some of those experiences have always been ingrained between community, profession, business, and high power woman and all that comes together but there's always it, it, it's not a problem if you have a 36 hour day oh yeah if you if you can <clears throat> I think it's working that. really well <laughs> <laughs> or coffee not stop <laughs> around the hour yeah i just found that people always need to know and discover and no matter how much we say we do know we don't know and even me the teacher where i'm thinking to launch this assignment to students I'm thinking, what happened to sixth grade grammar? Where'd you guys go for summer? And then you realize you need to learn that process with them and reteach and then grade and to the next chapter. How do the schools feel about that? Oh. Um, are, they, are they appreciative? Uh, oh. Or they feel like maybe you're stepping on their toe a little or what? Which schools? The schools for the, for the, from these, the, where the kids come from. For um, what, the what? Youth Summit or? Yeah, whatever. No. I think they like it. I guess they. I because guess you're, you're giving those kids something to take back and yeah. use in their classwork yeah. and so forth. I hope so. I mean, I really put a lot of faith and confidence into our volunteers as experts and the key volunteers leaders. are also teachers. Some are teachers. Some are well, director of career development, um, Chaminade University's Angela Coloretti. Oh, very nice. Yes, we also have Chrissy. Go Figgin okay. for social media as your communications oh, good, manager. Good, good. And Reed Palmera, who is actually my neighbor <laughs> from Wavecom to talk about the world of IT and careers for oh. computer programming. This is exactly what I wanted to do years ago. Oh. Have these guys come in, you know, and talk <laughs> about jobs and yeah. futures and uh, well, well, you know, it's maybe, like, and who knows, maybe we can collaborate going down the road. Yeah, maybe <laughs> for 2014 mm -hmm. at our Hawaii Convention Center. Yeah. I think you're fantastic, Jay, and you're just a phenomenon, <laughs> full of bright light and so, able to reach us. I can't handle this. <laughs> I'll need therapy immediately. Oh, no. <laughs> so how is 2014 going to yes. differ from 2013? Well, I think for 2014, I think we're looking more at a larger audience and a stronger platform for really tying in some of these key issues that have been sort of left to the wayside for Hawaii with economic and political at hand. I think this time around we stuck more with what seems to be family practice, what seems to be youth oriented, and more an open door or window to the real world about how business is functioning in Hawaii, the hard job reality, our post-recession, and what's going on with Obama, what's going on with health care and quality of education and transportation systems, things that I felt for this summit we wanted to work more with the student and their learning and their career are options. You, are you giving them political positions? No, I think they would like to learn about the spectrum and, and Develop decide. their own political positions. Absolutely. I felt so you're not going to get up there and say, well, you know, vote for you, you shouldn't like affordable no. care. It's not, you know, it's a bad, st or, no. you know, the website was a real disaster no, or no, whatever. No. I think one thing that, that really strikes me is when I was in high school, I'll be honest, I had developed a strong writer's voice from, you know, women's community writers women's writers community however i think we all as students we kind of put this world that we live in on the wayside and say oh that's like microwave and foil <laughs> but when you really think about it when you get to college you're going to be on your feet and you're going to have to know exactly what the world is asking you for and what you need to know you need to be about you, you don't sense that when you're in high school you you know it in text and you, you get it if you're in government, student government. But I really want the students to start to realize how much they're going to have to wake up to make it in this world. And that's, that's really what Youth Summit 2014 will be about. It'll be 
a reality to always look to and to know it each and every day and read it that paper. It sounds like, but you know, honestly, yeah, we are honest in everything. Yeah. You know? It sounds like you're talking about the horizon, the reality test of the student individually, yes. of making him a better or her a better person. But are you, are you also covering, you know, this is what I think a lot about, uh -huh. are you also covering the issue about the community? Is this yeah. community sufficiently aware of big issues? Well, you know, that's a really uh, hard watch, issue. Watch oh, sorry. That is a really hard issue because I'll say I've served safe places, the committee for the state legislature, for building shelters for children from broken homes, uh, children who've been trafficking themselves in Waikiki. And young children. Young, well, teenagers, young, teenagers. Teenagers. Yeah. And, you know, that is, that is community, but that is also a reality. And how are we in politics making a difference from that angle. Exactly. Do we understand? I taught students that went back to the homeless shelter off Kaka'ako and they would wear their shirts the same ones the next day. And I was happy to teach them. I was hopeful. And I would think about it late at night while I'm just stewing over things and over dinner. I really hope the best for my students, you know, for my, my children. They're my own. Mm -hmm. And I'd ask God, like, what are your plans for them? They, they have a different destiny. And how can I be a better person knowing that this is what goes on in our lives today? I'm not living out of a small little, you know, piece of the room. I, I have a bed and, and I can do my own laundry and I can go to the library and do what I need to do. These students, some of them don't even have a library card. Those are things that were on my heart. And that's where on I feel heart, we need to know. Interesting phrase in this in this program. Yes, Hawaii's we need to heart. know. It's we your need, heart. <laughs> we need to know. And all of my friends that have been attracted to our purpose and to the calling of bettering each other, there is no judgment and there is no bias. There is just the heart of giving, of knowing first what we can do to help each other. And by that, we become a better person. I, I am so shocked by how distant and different it feels to say this is community and this is political but it really can't be and that's a difficult area to navigate and you try hard and you work with partnerships and you talk to the right people but sometimes it's just education it's knowing who to work with and where research okay. comes from if you have the effect you want to have yes if you're able to perform the yes. mission that we talked about right. originally what is this society in Hawaii? What right. does it look like? It's an ideal of better educated adults who have the honesty, the integrity, and the call to action to do what's right. Not just recognize it and do it halfway, but all the way to support by policy and by education and to build the public's awareness so that we all know our role in bettering our world and our society today. The society we live in here in Hawaii, there is a lot that we don't know. And for what we should know, do we really encounter that in community? It is a sheltered life when you are in high school. You experience test taking, you know, getting into fights with your brother or sister, getting cut off from your friends, or not making it to, for the playoffs, for the sports that you belong to. But it's to. a very narrow but horizon. It's, it's parochial They have to, to some see degree. wider, broader, yes, deeper than that. Yes, how what you are doing and how much time you waste and what you could see well, is affected by what you know. What you, you adult, know. Yeah. Yes. And how we need you to be an adult yes. soon. You, you see that bill? Some, it was Suzanne Oakland, I think. Yeah introduced a bill to allow people to vote yeah. at the age of, I think, 15 or 16. That's amazing. It is amazing. She's it, done my so My goodness, much. it may pass. I yeah. like that. I do like that. Yeah. I, I'm just looking forward to more realization to our youth that their priorities count and that their answers are meaningful and they carry a lot of weight for the eyes they have and for the insights they can share. Before They're we important. close, I, I want to you know, my curiosity, this yes. is, you know, like Clarence Darrow <laughs> had a little wire in his cigar yes. and everybody's always fascinated yes. with the fact that the ash never felt, fell off the cigar. Yes. So these books have been on the table the whole time. Mm -hmm. You haven't mentioned, you haven't mentioned the chicken soup book. Oh. And I think you should. Yeah. We're going to hold that up. We're going to hold that up. Okay. It's the chicken soup. Chicken soup for a teenage, for the teenage soul. Uh, may I say, qu'est-ce que c'est? Uh, <laughs> actually, Serena, what is this all about? Oh, 
It's actually my place of inspiration for the summit. It is also a place of healing and learning. And I want, I want students to really pour into their own sort of Bible to, to learn it and catch it and write their own story and live it and be beyond. <laughs> you are selfless. Oh, thank you. You're completely selfless. <laughs> Sarita Korn, you know, trying to make the world better one soul at a time. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Hawaii's heart, it's the hearts in Hawaii. Yeah. It's only beginning. We've got to follow her as it goes thank forward. Thank you, Jay. Thank you so much for being with us today, Sarita. Thank you. You're just a sweetheart. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> now that's what I call community matters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have the arts in Hawaii uh, with Donna Blanchard. Thank you.